So the original Chinese ramen was actually created as an easy to make halal food. This sour ramen remained a familiar dish for Japanese people to this day. But I'm willing to go back one more time just for their amazing bowl of ramen. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Something you absolutely want to eat when you come to Japan is ramen, right? Many people might have the image that ramen is a Japanese dish, but it is originally from China. However, today, Chinese ramen and Japanese ramen have become something completely different. So today, as a Japanese man who has studied in Beijing, China for a year, I will explain the three main differences between ramen in China and Japan. Then next, I will introduce my three most favorite local ramen in Japan. So I hope you can enjoy this video till the end. This video will be a great chance for you to learn more about ramen so you can enjoy eating it even more. After watching this video, please let me know in the comments about your favorite kind of ramen. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. Then let's jump into today's main topic right away. These are the three main differences between Chinese and Japanese ramen. One, the history. Two, the point of focus. Three, the noodles. One, the history. The history of Chinese and Japanese ramen are completely different. Chinese ramen is said to have originated in the northwestern region of China. Since this was a passing point on the Silk Road, there were many Muslims residing here. For this reason, ramen originally only used beef and hardly any pork. So the original Chinese ramen was actually created as an easy to make halal food. Ramen in Japan has been commonly eaten since 1910, so it is fairly recent. After modernization and westernization, many foreigners started coming in and out of the country, and this led to the establishment of many Chinese restaurants. The first restaurant to serve ramen was called Rai Rai Ken. As Rai Rai Ken became very popular, Chinese restaurants serving ramen opened one after another in Tokyo, and along with gyoza and shumai dumplings, ramen became a standard menu item as a popular Chinese dish and spread through the street vendors. In 1923, the Great Kanto Earthquake, a 7.9 magnitude earthquake that caused major damage, forced the stores that were operating in Tokyo to scatter across the country, which led to ramen gaining popularity nationwide. In 1945, during impoverished years after the end of World War II, black markets existed in Japan at that time. What was required in a poor environment was food that could be easily obtained and served as cheaply as possible. So ramen began to be made and is spread throughout the public. This sour ramen remained a familiar dish for Japanese people to this day. Local ramen using ingredients unique to each region have also appeared throughout Japan, serving as an opportunity for attracting tourists. Two, point of focus. Let's finally start taking a look at the differences of the ramen itself. In China and Japan, there are different points of focus for ramen. In China, the order of importance is the ingredients, the noodles, and then the soup. In Japan, it's the opposite, and the order of importance is the soup, the noodles, and then the ingredients. Therefore, Chinese noodles often use the included ingredients in the name of the dish, such as stir-fried beef noodles or noodles and five meat soup. On the other hand, in Japan, the type of soup is often written in the name of the restaurant or the dish. There are so many varieties of soup. Tonkotsu, chicken bones, seafood, soy sauce, miso, etc. Also, Japanese food in general, including ramen, cherishes using rich soup stock. It is not rare for a dedicated ramen shop to simmer their soup stock for more than a day to realize delicious ramen soup. 
Chinese noodles often have very light soup and are instead covered by the seasoning and abundance of ingredients. 3. The noodles Lastly, the kind of noodles is very different too. Japan, hard and thin. China, soft and thick. The biggest difference is the addition of brine to the noodles and how they are made. Japanese ramen noodles are made by adding brine to the noodles, which gives them a unique firm and chewy texture. Chinese ramen, on the other hand, uses almost no brine, giving it a soft texture very close to Japanese udon. Also, since ramen originally means pulled noodle in Chinese, hand stretching is the most common method to make the noodles in China. This inevitably makes the noodles thicker. In Japan, the noodles are made basically using the noodle making machines, which often produce the thin noodles. However, we need to keep in mind that this is just a general rule. You can ask for Japanese noodles to be softer by ordering how hard you want them. And of course, it is possible to ask the chef to make the Chinese noodles thinner. By the way, Japanese ramen is also now very popular in China, and there are stores all over the country serving Japanese-style ramen. I myself ate Japanese-style ramen in China several times while studying in Beijing, and once again, I realized that they are very different. There are many other Chinese dishes imitated by the Japanese, such as the gyoza dumplings and fried rice. But none of them are as popular among the Chinese because they're all made to suit the Japanese taste. Ramen is the only exception and is also loved by Chinese people too. Now that we've talked about ramen so much, I'm sure you're all starting to crave it. So finally, I would like to present my top three recommended local ramen in Japan from among more than 40 varieties that you should try when you have a chance to visit Japan. Number three, Kyoto ramen. What? Did Shogo rank Kyoto in third? That's right, I am in Kyoto and I was born here, but it comes in third. You might imagine the traditional and simple kaiseki dishes when you imagine the food in Kyoto, but their ramen is actually really popular too. There is actually an area called Ramen Street with multiple ramen restaurants in a district in the northern part of Kyoto City. Kyoto ramen is famous for its rich pork bone soy sauce broth and sweetness of the local green onion called kujonegi. Some restaurants may include back fat in the soup, and the rich and oily soup is irresistible. Number two, Hokkaido ramen. Many people, especially those who are interested in winter sports, may be interested in visiting Hokkaido, the northernmost prefecture of Japan. Since Hokkaido is the largest prefecture in Japan, there are actually several types of ramen, of which I love the ramen from a city called Asahikawa. Hokkaido is known for its seafood cuisine, and the seafood-based deliciousness is contained in all the miso, salt, and soy sauce, and the layers of flavor and depth will make you sigh in happiness. Another interesting feature is that lard is actually added in the soup. This keeps the soup from cooling down and allows the ramen to stay hot. Hokkaido is the coldest region in Japan, so I think this kind of creativity is wonderful. Number one, Wakayama ramen. Huh? Where is Wakayama? Maybe some of you may have thought so. I'm sure compared to Tokyo and Osaka, it's a place you don't hear about so often. Wakayama Prefecture is located south of Kyoto, where I live. And the most famous places there include Mount Koya, Kumanokodo, and Nachi Falls. Wakayama ramen soup is pork bone soy sauce. Noodles are straight and thin, and the ingredients are chopped green onions, menma, chashu pork, and kamaboko, which is red and white patterned fish paste, similar to naruto. When eating wakayama ramen, there is a custom to eat hayazushi and boiled eggs together. When I was a university student and a member of the Shorinji Kenpo Club, I went to Wakayama Prefecture with my teammates and had this Wakayama ramen for the first time. I remember the ramen I had that time was so good that I couldn't help but order another bowl. I haven't been to Wakayama Prefecture since then, but I'm willing to go back one more time just for their amazing bowl of ramen. 
So I have presented my super personal ranking, but there are many other local ramen in each region. Even if you unfortunately can't go to eat the ramen I recommended, please try to find ramen in the area you visited. Or again, if you already have your favorite kind of ramen, please let me know in the comments. Then lastly, today's conclusion. The three main differences between Chinese and Japanese ramen are 1. The history 2. The point of focus 3. The noodles Chinese ramen has existed from ancient times as an easy-to-make halal food for Muslims residing in the passing point of the Silk Road. Japanese ramen became commonly eaten much more recently in 1910 when Japan modernized through the Meiji Restoration. Due to the Great Kanto Earthquake in 1923 and the black markets after World War II, ramen spread throughout Japan as a local cuisine. In China, the order of importance is ingredients, noodles, and soup, whereas in Japan, it is the opposite. China has soft and thick noodles because it doesn't include frying and is commonly made by hand stretching. Japan, on the other hand, has hard and thin noodles because it adds brine and is also made by the noodle-making machines. The three local ramen that I personally recommend are Kyoto Ramen, Hokkaido Ramen, and Wakayama Ramen. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video made you want to eat ramen right away, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And our goal is to achieve 2 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And we'll see you in our next video. So I didn't mention about this in the main part of the video, but uh, I talked about my three most favorite local ramen, right? But to be honest, I have a specific ramen restaurant that I love very, very much. And I actually made a video uh, visiting there when we were uh, celebrating 500 subscribers. <laughs> it's a really, really old video, but I hope you can check it out. There's a ramen restaurant called Korai in Kyoto, Korai. I think they have like two brand, there's two restaurants with the same name, and they are the same restaurant by the way, but I just love Korai ramen so much. And I've been to so many other uh, ramen restaurants in Kyoto and all over Japan, but to be honest, nothing has uh, defeated Korai ramen inside of me before. So uh, if you're ever coming to Kyoto, of course the Kyoto ramen up in the Kyoto um, ramen street is amazing too, yeah. But if you have a chance to go to a specific restaurant, which you need to of course um, adjust your schedule and everything, but if you do have a chance, Korai is just so amazing. It'd be great if you can go and eat the ramen, of course for you to enjoy it, but also for you to support them as a restaurant too. It'd be great if you can try their ramen out.